Stadium here in Zurich for what promises to be a momentous climax to the World Super Series of Squash. The series has taken us to Melbourne, Johannesburg, to Kiel, Amsterdam, Hong Kong and Qatar. And now here in Switzerland, the eight leading players are involved in a round-robin event to decide who will be the champion. Deus, the sponsors, have put up the money, $100,000 overall, with $25,000 going to the winner. The eight players are... Jan Chikan, the world number one. His arch rival, world number two, Chris Dittmar. The 1991 world champion, Rodney Martin. And his brother, Brett, one of the great touch players in the world. Peter Marshall of the two-handed grip. And the mercurial Tristan Nancaro from Australia. Rodney Isles, the consistent Australia, plus the all-action fair-haired Chris Walker, make up the list. Five Australians, two Englishmen, and at the top of the tree, the world champion from Pakistan. The structure of this Super Series final is not the normal knockout format. The four winners of the first matches move to the right, creating a semi-final situation. The losing semi-finalists play off for third and fourth position. The four losers of the first round move to the left and play off over a further two matches to finalize the fifth to eighth positions. The first match on court has Rodney Isles, the world's number 10, in the all blue versus Tristan Nancaro, the mercurial Australian with the multicolored kit. Tristan at this stage has won the first 15-12. But Rodney Isles is serving 9-10 and making quite a match of it. Two Australian shirt, both of them completely contrasting personalities, but similar qualities. Just look at that wonderful cross-court shot from Rodney Isles. He's taken the game to Tristan. This is the young man's style to attack, and he's done that right the way until this point, and there Tristan, an unforced error, the ball finding the top of the tin. Rodney Isles has shown a lot of promise as a young man. 1986, he played Jan Khan in the Brisbane World Junior Championship, but a foot injury has plagued his career. He reached number seven in the world, but it's, it's wonderful for the squash fans to see him back playing at this level, and in the eight players competing for the World Super Series final. Slightly contrasting, of course, is his opponent, Tristan, what a difference a year makes. Twelve months ago, he was out of the game. Uh, his own association had given him a four-month force rest. But here he is back at the highest position he's ever attained. Five in the world and uh, showing the style we know he's got. Tristan serving. Rodney Isles receiving. And it's been all action between these two players. Both loving to attack and defend. And here we're seeing the both qualities. Tristan there on top of that ball. And opening Rodney up, puts the ball away. Rodney Isles can only just watch it flash past. And that's what made it, that lovely drop. Tristan picking up the loose return, drives the ball away. 12 all the score. And uh, for all of you club players, that's what we call width. These players at this level can tie that ball to the wall. But knowing Rodney Isles, that won't last. The attack will come. A lot of variation on these two players. Using all the court. With incre incredible skills now. This is a lovely rally. Tristan Nancaro is playing as well as I've seen him. And there, typical, the flamboyant Tristan Nancaro puts that ball stone dead and goes on to win by three games to love. Jancha, Khan and Brett Martin was the next match on court. Jancha in the green shorts is leading by two games to love and serving here at 11-6. <laughs> as his opponent, Brett Martin, shows us a, an improvised shot. Little flick over the head. Brett, of course, is brother of Rodney Martin. He's the elder brother. 
And I won't say of the more famous one because one's ranked three in the world and Brett here ranked four. But he's been on the wrong end of things here. The world's number one, Jan Khan in the green shorts, has really been giving him a working over. And there, that lovely drop from Jancha, followed by a cross court from Brett Martin, but finding the top of the tin. Jancha moves on. This match has really been about the movement of this Pakistani, showing us just why he's the world's number one player. To date, he's got it all. British Open champion, world champion, world number one, and hoping this week here in Zurich to add the World Super Series final to his list of accomplishments. And if he continues like this, he's on the right road, forcing two quick errors from Brett Martin, both with perfect wit. And there, that's showing us just what makes him world number four. You don't give in at this level. Lovely drop shot, too tight for the world champion. And back comes the older Martin brother. We see here just why he's considered the hardest hitter in the world. And a perfect example, Brett Martin, wonderfully positioned, kills that ball into the left-hand nick. Goes hand in. Are we seeing a comeback from the Australian? Certainly an uncharacteristic error there from Jansha as he snatches for that ball. With Brett serving, he's delighting the crowd with his ability to hit this ball so hard. Considered the hardest hitter on the circuit, 29 years of age. And there, another example of it. Can this man hit a ball? And it's all wrist. It's not about swing. But that ball just too tight. No matter how hard you can hit it, if you can cling it to the wall. Well, <laughs> another love match. But Jansha is back in control. A place he's used to being. And I'm wondering if he's pulled the final sting out of the tail of this Australian. He's certainly looking very confident, but again, Brett is back into the hard-hitting syndrome. And a wonderful reactionary shot from him there. Only Brett Martin can play those. Going left, flicks the ball right. But still, game point for the match. Jansha queries it. Nope, the referee sticks to his decision. It still stays. Match ball. And now Brett has to find something special to get back into this. And there's no harder man in the world to have to come back against than this 22-year-old from Peshawar playing the best of his life. And that ball finds the bottom of the tin. And the two hands will go out. Jancha will take his rightful place in the final. When Chris Walker in the all-white met fellow Englishman Peter Marshall, it produced a different style of match. This was a war of attrition. Walker in the headband and the all-white against the double-hander. Also from England, Peter Marshall in the green shorts. This, uh, although they're good friends on the circuit, is no love match, I assure you. They're ranked one and two in England, and they're ranked six and seven in the world. Peter Marshall being one up in both cases. And Chris Walker will be out to try and prove that he's the better man. And I'm fine with Peter Marshall. He'll be doing everything to retain his superior position on the ranking scale. And here we are in the beginning of the first game, and we can already see just what's made these boys climb so high within the last 12 months. The score stays at level, the let given, and that a very fierce, attritional rally to start this match. 
Level. Both players obviously very keen not to make mistakes. But the quality of squash as early as this in a match is exceptionally high. Both players quite happy to go for their shots. Chris Walker, of course, is a very athletic young man who likes to play lots of boasts, move the ball around the court. Peter Marshall, happy to stay on court for the weekend. And if this rally goes on much longer, he might well be. <laughs> the crowd are already starting to ooh and ah. And this is a first-class rally. Fine mixture, attack and defense. Chris Walker with the Rodney Martin style of grip. Totally contrasting to his opponent. And there's nobody in the world plays the ball quite like Peter Marshall with his two hands. And still this rally goes on. There's a buzz already going around the crowd. Well, can we imagine five games of this? My goodness me, how long would we be here? And finally, an error. That face says it all. They've only just started and already digging in lungfuls of air. But Peter Marshall will be used to that. Athleticism here of the highest order from young Chris Walker of England. Keeping this ball in play, but Peter Marshall is wearing him, working him, and his superior fitness was to take him through this match by three games to love. The next match on court involves Chris Dittmar and Rodney Martin, the world's two highest ranked Australians. A total contrast of styles, but two players who have won virtually every top title between them. Chris Dittmar, the red-headed Australian in the blue shorts, against his fellow Australian, Rodney Martin. And the crowd already showing their appreciation. This first game has been played at a sensational pace. Both players obviously here decided to go for broke. And the winner has been the crowd because they're seeing some exceptionally exciting squash from both men. Chris Dittmar, number two in the world and seeded two in this tournament against Rodney Martin, the world number three. <laughs> Rodney Martin not happy with just playing, wants to act as referee as well. I'd suggest he sticks to the play because he can really do this well. And the attack that's coming from both players has been of the highest possible order. And it continues. And that perfect length from Chris Dittmar forces the error out of Rodney Martin. And Chris Dittmar takes the first game very tight. He was to take the second game. Here we are in the third. Martin to serve at 8-11. Wonderful disguise there from Chris Dittmar. And my goodness me, we're seeing it all now. Not many men in the world can do this. This is truly magnificent squash. I sense Rodney is desperately tired at this time, but won't give out. And that ball of his, picked from under his feet, finds the top of the tin. And that is the face of a man who has put in an immense effort. 12-8. Chris Dittmar serving from the right. And Rodney Martin saves himself the effort of having to run around the court. He crosses that ball and melts it into the right-hand nick. Takes on a little more air and the crowd try to raise him. I don't think it's personal against Chris Dittmar. They just want this match to continue. And I can understand why. 9-12. And a lovely floated drop from Rodney. Produces the comment from his opponent. Good shot. Again the crowd. 
raising Rodney, and he's now serving at 10 12. Let ball. What they wouldn't give to have him come back. He's still desperately tired. And Chris Dittmar is not the sort of man to let you off the hook once he's got you. But not every man has got the talent of Rodney Martin. And here we see the immense attack that he can put on. But Chris Dittmar has been up to everything up till now. He's responded and always given that little bit more. And that a wonderful length. Absolutely killing the ball. He's always said the best part of anybody's game is the length. And they're a perfect example. 14-10. Match ball. The crowd are frightened to blink. The pace of this game has been really miraculous. And it continues. Wonderful attack and defence. Rodney being forced to the back of the court. And Dittmar in with the attack. It just goes to show what you can achieve with effort. And the crowd will love it. Back into hand comes Rodney Martin. Still struggling to get back into this match. But he's two games down. And he's really up against it. Chris Dittmar won't want to let this go. He wants another final on his cards. And that length, just too good. Rodney has put in immense work. <laughs> but his fans are loving every second. Match ball. Well, if you're going to save a match ball with nonchalance, that's the way to do it. <laughs> Again, cross-court Nick. <laughs> a Rodney Martin special. There. Example of his grip held very, very high, but still match ball. Chris Dittmar will want to squeeze this out now. He won't want to stay on, using up any more energy. But Rodney's going to work for this. Wonderful reactionary rally. And that, that shot by Chris Dittmar, cross court. Puts him into the final against his old foe, Jan Shah Khan. Come back from two love down against Chris, but yeah, you know, it was it was the first two games that really told the told the match. You know, if if I won one of the first two games, we could have made a difference to the outcome of the match, but um, you know, it's too strong today and put me under a lot of pressure. The, far, the pace was pretty fast and furious and uh, I didn't cope with that all day, but you know, I'm reasonably happy with my form, so I played too good today. And uh, third, fourth playoff, you looking forward to it? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we always have a tough game. So I'm not really looking forward to it, no. I'm glad we've got a day's break to uh, face up to it on Tuesday. And uh, if you get the crowd behind you again like that, do you think you're going to be all right? Well, I hope so. I'd just like to say thanks to the crowd. It makes it so much more enjoyable playing squash in front of an appreciative crowd like yourselves. And uh, just thanks for coming along and supporting squash. Obviously every match is tough, so I had to think about getting over Chris Walker yesterday and then uh, playing Rodney today, uh, you know, obviously a, a fantastic player and on his day the best and uh, I, I've really just been thinking about that and so now I've got, as, as Rodney said, we've got a rest day now so I can practice all day tomorrow and, and start to think about Jan. All day? <laughs> oh, most of it. I'll probably sleep and have a bit of breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and as chairman of, of ISPA, or PSA as it is now, are you pleased that finally we've managed to get the Grand Prix final together? Yeah, for sure. Already this has been a huge success, and uh, to yourself, Andrew, and to uh, Musty, and uh, of course, Colin, um, I know you organise this in, in a relatively short space of time, and when we talk about the last few months, and uh, to Tim Stewart and Dais, of course, uh, this really is what we've been after for years and years, and I think already it's been a huge success, and it's only going to get better, I'm pretty sure. Well, I think you players deserve it, and I think the whole crowd does. Mr. Chris Dittmar. The playoff for third and fourth place brought together two brothers. 1991 world champion Rodney Martin is recognized as the most naturally gifted player on the circuit. 
but lack of consistency has often been his major drawback. A man who doesn't suffer fools gladly, Rodney sets the highest standards. The hardest hitter in squash, Brett Martin, is the best touch player in the game, whose film star looks and mild manner assures him of a lot of support from the ladies in the gallery. His quarter-final clash in the 1992 World Open with younger brother Rodney is recognized as a squash classic. The score is 10 all in the first, and this looks like a repeat of that wonderful game in Johannesburg. Rodney Martin there serving in the black shorts against his brother Brett in the all-white. This game has been played at a furious pace. Occasionally, the draw of the world's top tournaments will throw up a clash between these two brothers, and it always seems to give us a momentous match. The last one, of course, being in Johannesburg in the World Championships, and this one seems to be going down that same road. This rally, typical of the pace and the variation of play from both of them. And there, that trickle boost from Brett. Just on the top of the tin, and Rodney moves on 11-10 from the left. The crowd here have been enthralled by these two players. I suppose they know each other's game so well, there's not much surprises for them, but there's certainly a lot for the crowd. And there, that great girl puts Brett into hand. 11-0, tied in this first game. A missed drop. Rodney will not be pleased. 12-11, Brett Martin. Contrast in personalities, contrast in styles, and yet two brothers from a great sporting family. Their sister Michelle is in fact the leading lady player on the world circuit, just having attained that position now. And there that boast clipping the top of the tin puts Rodney back into hand, 12-all. Brett Martin using his great flick, a man with possibly the best wrist in the game, comes back in 13-12 from the right, all white Brett Martin, out of court from his brother. Look of frustration, Rodney always expects the best, and especially from himself. Marvellous accuracy from both players. Attacking these corners. Trickle boast from Rodney. And there, Brett's wrist. Terrific disguise. Sends his brother scurrying to the back of the court. So the first game to Brett Martin, 15-12. We're in the second with Brett to serve. Love all. Of course, the first game, so important to these players to settle. Brett missing, cross-court, drop, and Rodney comes into hand. One love. He'll be looking to level the scores, and there, shot down the centre of the court. But Brett's reactions are really quite electrifying, but not there. Shot comes back into himself. Rodney had gone the wrong way. So, Rodney Martin, two love. Neither player likes to go to the back of the court, preferring to attack from the front. That's where the winning points are at this level. <laughs> Another example of the brotherly love disappearing out the window. Boys are now throwing in a superb variation, and what a wonderful length and wonderful disguise from Brett Martin, completely fooling his brother. Kill. 
superb subtlety from both players. Marvellous reaction from Rodney, defending, but Brett onto that ball and dropping it stone dead in the right-hand nick. Brett Martin holding this score, still leading, of course, by one game to love and demonstrating the power and mix of subtlety that he's got in his game. Both of these players are a delight to watch. It's almost exhibition stuff with them. And there, a repeat of that earlier point, stepping in and dropping the ball stone dead. Brett Martin serving from the left-hand box to all. And an interesting contrast between the two of them. Brett likes to go off like a, like a train, very quick. Rodney needs to slow him down. That's his usual tactic against his brother. Lovely trickle boast. And yes, let. Mike Fitchett, the English referee in charge here. Hardly needed, except to keep the score. And then Rodney, a typical Rodney Martin drop. Beautiful open racket face. Puts him to three all. Four three Rodney. Brett's little wrist action. Clipping the top of the tin. But still very tight. One game to love Brett Martin. Four three in the second. Reverse angle. Attack and defense. And Rodney, unable to pick that up off the back wall, allows Brett in, hand in for all. Little look from brother to brother. <laughs> Another example of that wrist. Does anybody know where it's going? I suppose Rodney's the only one. And their half volley attempt, miss hit, puts Rodney back into hand at 5-4. Oh, marvellous, marvellous kill. Two feet off the ground, and Brett finds the neck. Five all. And there we see it, high in the air. Classic kill. Superb length of such pace. Lovely retrieval from Rodney, but Brett slots the ball into the neck. But even though he took that point, it wasn't enough to stop Rodney going on to win that game, 15-13. 4-3 in the third game. So, one game each, the brothers locked. And still the pace is fast and furious. Although playing for third and fourth spot in this Super Series final, this would complement any final anywhere in the world. $100,000 tournament, $25,000 to the winner. But these boys aren't thinking of money. This is professional and family pride. They don't like losing to each other. Oh. Rodney trying for the, the ultimate. It's confused the audience, but the ball was down. Brett comes in at four all. And Rodney just pushing that ball into the top of the tin. Marvellous length. It doesn't look dramatic, but that's what wins the points. 5-6. Brett loves his reverse angles. <laughs> and if it opens the match up like that, so he should. 
That fantastic shot shows the pace that this match is being played at. Brett Lowe went on to win it, 15-8 to go, 2-1 up. Now in the fourth, the score is 7-5 to Rodney. And the pace continues. The crowd are ooing and ahhing, and quite so. <laughs> this is exhibition. And finally, the ball going down. But what wonderful retrievals from both players. Well, this crowd, whatever they paid for their ticket, they've had their money's worth. Nothing if not exciting. And for the followers of squash, they're having a feast now. Breathtaking speed from both players. Back wall boast. Drops. We're getting it all. But Rodney under pressure. What a recovery. <laughs> Almost de defies description. And there, an attempted shot from behind his back. Not making it. <laughs> Little look towards his brother. Amazing power from Brett. Always hits the ball with a slightly flat face. That's what gives him it with the amazing wrist. Wonderful example of attack and defense. Reverse angle from Brett. Too tight for his brother. <laughs> Rodney serves. Second match ball against. Brett will be hoping to squeeze this out. As much as the crowd are enjoying it, the players will be wanting to get the win in. Reverse angle from Brett, attacking. Delightful drop, and on match ball, Rodney puts the ball back to himself, and Brett takes it three games to one to take the third place, his brother the fourth, in the Super Series final. The Super Series final featured the two great men in squash. Jan Khan believes his change of lifestyle led to his domination of the world squash scene in 1992. He now lives and trains in his hometown, Peshawar, on the northwest frontier. A stable home life has given the shy Jancha a new self-belief and confidence. Australian Chris Dittmar is the outspoken president of the Squash Players Association. A superb ambassador for squash, Dipmar is renowned for his patriotism and dry sense of humor. His single-minded approach makes him one of the most feared opponents in world squash. Jansha won the first game and was looking ominous until five all in the second, when a moment of high drama hushed the crowd. Five all, Jansha in the green shorts, serving to Chris Dipmar, the red-haired Australian, in the dark kit. Oh, my goodness me, that looked nasty. Jancha attempting to get to a very tight ball from Chris Dittmar, stretches and overstretches. It looks like he's probably slipped on some sweat and we can see him in a certain amount of discomfort. The crowd, the crowd have hushed. Jancha's certainly favoring that leg and a look of concern. Yes, the young man's come on to clear the sweat. That seems to be the problem. Jancha continued to play, but never got back into the game. Dipmar went on to win 15-11 and tie the score at one game all. Here we are midway through the third. So, tied together. These two great players who have dominated the World Super Series all over the world this year. Chris Dipmar in the coloured kit, red-haired Australian. Forces an error. Eleven all in the third. Rarely see Jancha miss a drop from that position. Oh, that ball just out of court, and I think we were talking millimetres. 
But there again, these players play to millimeters. 12-11, Janchuk from the left. His shirt out, ready for business. There'll be no surprises from these two. They've played each other enough. And it's the usual cat and mouse game. Janchuk trying to take the lungs out of the big Australian, moving him around the court as he does so well. Jancha striking the ball tight down the forehand wall and Chris Dittmark proving to the referee Bruce Kettle I can get to that let ball this match has been interspersed with some wonderful rallying from both players and here we seem to go again recoveries and attacks but there Jancha unable to pick up that ball, the length just too good. Chris Dittmar chops the ball in short. Jancha's wonderful stretch lifts it. But then the Australian attacking, just too tight. And there, that stretch still unable to reach it. 12 all. Chris Dittmar from the right. And again, out of court, frustration. He stands there and stares in disbelief at his own shot. 13-12. Jansha in hand. Great cross-court attempt from Chris Dittmar, but Jansha goes in and punishes it. 14-12. Game ball to Jansha Khan, the world number one. Chris Dittmar desperate to get back into this game. one all. Very tight. Similar to the last time they played in Qatar in the final lap in the Super Series. Chris Dittmar now seems to have the upper hand and again drives cross court for a wonderful winner. That disguise holding the ball to the last second. Jancha unable to pick it up at the back of the court. He saves one game ball. 13-14. The big Aussie prepares himself for another onslaught because these rallies take a lot out of you, no matter how fit you are, and these boys are fit. But Jancha seems to be in commanding position here, and yes, he's dropped that ball into the nick to take this game 15-13 and a 2-1 lead in this Super Series final. Fourth game, Jancha serves from the left to start it. Chris Dittmar desperate now to get back in. He's 2-1 down. And with Jancha retrieving like this, it's going to be a monumental task. Wonderful reactions from both players. Jancha asks for the let, and he'll be disappointed with that. That face said it all. Bruce Kettle is not on the birthday list. It's going to be hard slog here for Chris Dittmar. You don't take much from Jansha Khan easily. And that cross-court drop brings Jansha back into hand at one all. He's had terrific support from the crowd. There's a, a contingent of very noisy supporters for him, but it's all good fun. Doesn't worry Chris Dittmar, not with the way he dropped that from the back of the court. Lovely long drop. And the crowd enthralled. Zurich has come to a standstill for this match. Cross-court Nick. He might be big, but he's still got skills to go with his power. Jancha asks for the let, and Bruce Kettle agrees. 3-1, the score stays. Excuse me, says Jancha, and pushes his way around, reverse angle. And 
another let. The sweat coming off this big Australian's face. He's put in another big effort against his old foe. And now, Chris asking, was that ball up? <laughs> Chris amuses the crowd with his example of his dry humour. Two, three. Two, three. Jancha not smiling, just wants to get on with it. Little nudge. Two, three. And again. Two, three. This is a perfect example of the electrifying pace that's been injected in some of these rallies. And there, a wonderful length from Jancha, just too tight. <laughs> Three all. Picks up an easy point there. 4-3, he seems to be fully recovered from the leg injury. <laughs> and the, his band of supporters get behind him. It won't worry Chris Dittmar, he'll be oblivious of them. But he won't be oblivious of that. That was a wonderful drop. Jancha right over the top of that ball, slots it away and goes 5-3 up. Fourth game, leading by two games to one. The players won't be thinking about it, but of course, at the end of the day, there's a nice check, $25,000 to the winner. High boost from Jancha. Picks up Dipmar going the wrong way, and another point. Chris Dipmar didn't even ask. Jancha moves on, 7-3. Surely he'll ask there. Just let 7-3. Quiet look up from Jansha was all for Bruce Kettle needed to give the let. 7-3. Detmar is going to have to start playing some short shots here because this is Jansha's sort of game. That cross court puts in 8-3. And the crowd totally enthralled. I'm not sure about this man, though. He'll be plotting, thinking, great, great tactician. But that drop, not of the standard he normally sets for himself. And that puts Jancha 9-3. He seems to be running away in this fourth. Chris Dittmar can't allow this. Jancha seemed intent upon trying to block this match out in this game and that high backhand of the highest order Ten three. Ten three. Dittmar has to put the brakes on him the Pakistani player is running away at this moment Dittmar now in control Drop follows drop, and surely a stroke. Yes, a stroke puts him back into hand, 4-10. Now, what can young Mr. Dittmar do? He's enjoyed his birthday here this week. I'm sure the present he'd like would be to take this game. And I think this crowd would like to see it as well. See this match extended, 4-10. And the supporters from Chris Dittmar. Jansha's crowd a little noisy, but all in good fun.
reaction follows reaction. And Jancha puts that down well in a good attacking position. Chris Dittmar, 5-10, coming back point by point. It's going to be a long road. 5-10, five, five points adrift. Jancha, of course, needing five points to squeeze out this final. But another point there from Chris Dittmar, the length doing the damage. 6-10. Four points now. This is the sort of run he needs to pull back the world number one. Wonderful reactions from both players. Volley follows volley. But surely Jansha in control at this stage. And there, the hallmark of the great man himself. Perfect balance, perfect drop. And back into hand. 11-6. What do you do, he's saying. This is tough. But he won't give in. It's not in the man's vocabulary. He's a fighter. Jancher asks for the let and gets it. We have to remember just how fast these men are. They can pick up most things on the court. But that ball too tight. And Chris Dittmar comes back into hand, 7-11. Now. Can he spur himself on? Of course, Jancha, four points away from this Super Series final. And $25,000 check to take back to Peshawar with him. He's certainly got Chris moving around the court. And cruelly drops it at the furthest possible place from him. <laughs> and here we see the patriotic support for Young. Mr. Khan, but Dipmar, quite rightly, waits for quiet. So 12-7, three points away. Can he squeeze it out now? Dipmar in the driving seat, but that ball so tight. Nothing he could do with it. Frustration on his face. He felt he had control of the rally, but Jancha now 13-7, two points away, and being urged on. He doesn't really need this. He'd rather have quiet. He's on a roll. 13-7. And that weak return puts it at 14-7. And the crowd have gone quiet. Match ball. Championship ball. How will Chris Dittmar respond? Well, we soon found out. <laughs> a straight drop of the highest order. And Chris Dittmar grits his teeth and comes back in. 8-14, but of course, still match ball. Still championship ball. Surely, Dittmar won't get that, and no. Jansha puts the ball away and takes this Super Series final. These two great men of squash have fought each other all year, and Jansha Khan takes the ultimate prize, the champion of the Super Series final, and $25,000. Winning in four games, 15-10, 11-15, 15-13, 15-8. Well, Jansha Khan, you're the world champion, you're the world's number one, you're the British Open champion, now Super Series final champion. How does it feel? Well, uh, Super uh, Series Challenge is a very important tournament for me because this is first tournament of the year. And I think it's, it's important because uh, 92, I just lost one tournament, Australian Open. Except Australian Open, I'm winning all major tournaments. And I think uh, this tournament is very, very important for me because this is the 93 first tournament. And I'm sure uh, that tournament gives me more confidence. And I'm sure uh, I will be uh, playing more good. Uh, this year.